For the day will come and our kin will stand on Terra's firm soil, ready to rebuild the Star League with their hearts and hands. But who shall lead? Upon whose shoulders will the burden lie? The answer is the test. The test is the journey. Whichever clan carves its way through the barbarians to reach that fabled cradle of us all shall be the vehicle of the League's rebirth. Upon the Star League throne shall sit that clan's wisest calf. So should it be. So shall it be. Hey everyone, this is Darren, also known as Bombadil from No Guts No Galaxy, and I'd like to welcome you to the MechWarrior Online Devlog number 5. This is our chance to get to know the devs and hear directly from them on the past, present, and future of MechWarrior Online. In this episode, we'll hear from the devs on such topics as clan battle mech cockpits, general game balance, as well as updates on the matchmaker system. So let's jump right in with our first question for Lisa, 3D artist for MechWarrior Online. How did you approach the design of the clan cockpits and what makes them different from their inner sphere counterparts? Well, our goal with the clan cockpits was that you would immediately know you're in a clan cockpit or in a clan mech as soon as you dropped into a map. So even if you didn't know if you what mech you were watching or you were in, you would know immediately you're either in a clan or an inner sphere cockpit. So what we ended up doing was doing a more sleek design with a lot more organic shapes. So things like the frame are rounder, and we have all new monitor pieces and dashboard pieces. And the dashboard got a complete overhaul with a completely new style. And we also added a whole new material system to it so that we have more unpainted metals and thinner looking metals and make it feel more modern. In general, they feel a lot more cramped than the inner sphere cockpits, but they have uh, optimal visibility. So a lot more windows in a lot of their original concepts. And also we wanted to make sure that they still felt like they belonged to the same universe, but had entirely new technology. My personal favorite is the kit box. I like the original T-shaped window design for that one. And next, we'll get a matchmaker update from Carl, senior systems engineer for MechWarrior Online. How will the code prioritize matchmaking, and how soon will the new system be implemented? Uh, currently it looks at group size, ELO, weight class, and age. Uh, additionally, we're going to try and get faction and tonnage matching there as well. Right now, uh, 4x3 is working in testing. Uh, additionally, just to guarantee it works, we have uh, what are called release valves built into the system. Those release valves essentially look at the incoming player counts, uh, determine whether or not 4x3 is going to continue to be viable, uh, and will relax those constraints over time just to guarantee we continue taking matches no matter what happens. Uh, currently, we have uh, an external process which can simulate actual production matchmaking data. Uh, that includes game filter selections, game limits, uh, the mech selections, uh, several other factors as well, and replay those at various rates, including group sizes. Uh, so I can I can actually play with those input values quite a bit uh, to simulate specific edge cases and degenerate cases, uh, including up to taking out weight classes completely from the system just to verify that under all situations the matchmaker continues to function correctly. Uh, they're currently nearly complete. I'm working on the stretch goals right now. Uh, hopefully I should be done by the end of this week, in fact, so by the time you see this video. Uh, well, if I hit my stretch goals and finish by the end of this week, uh, I'll hand it off to our QA department, Ricky. Uh, and hopefully sometime after that we'll be able to see something on public test or something we'll discuss, I'm sure. Realistically, we'd be looking at July 1st at the earliest. That's correct, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, July 1st at the earliest. Um, that would involve a mandatory two-week QA time to go through a stable on stage. So that's that's really the earliest you'd, you'd see it on production. And just for fun, Alex and Ricky tell us which is their favorite new clan battle mech. Uh, my favorite clan mech is the Stormcrow. It's fast. It carries a good amount of firepower. It looks like a sort of a tack chopper on the legs and it's got like little weird claw kind of hands and I don't know, they look neat. My favorite clan mat is the Lova. It's fast, it got jump jets and you can put 16 weapons on it. And finally, Paul, lead designer for MechWarrior Online, shares some information on upcoming changes and general game balance. Okay, let's talk about weapons. Uh, SRMs are 
tuned very well now. Uh, the Buckton fix was investigated, like we mentioned last time. Um, it is now in the build. It will be ready for July 17th. Uh, we're going to expect an increase in probably damage being dealt around maybe 15 to 17% somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, we're going to be keeping an eye on it just to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Since the tournament, um, we've been looking at the air and artillery strikes and we made those few adjustments about the spacing of the shells and the amount of damage that they were doing. Uh, we're still maintaining a good constant eye on them to make sure that they're not doing crazy amounts of stuff. Uh, we're looking into the splash damage overlap. We're also looking into possibly, now you guys were asking for this, we're possibly looking into um, reducing the amount of damage that the head takes from those explosions. Even if it's a direct impact, we're still going to take a look at uh, reducing the amount of damage that the head takes. Uh, so plans. We are nearing our first set of usable numbers on the weapons, uh, the overall balance. Uh, I've got to tell you, they feel very, very powerful just because of the sheer amount of weaponry you can bring onto the battlefield. Um, the way the new mechanics are going to be working out, as explained in my last uh, command chair post, the mechs feel dangerous on the battlefield, but I'm going to tell you this, you're going to have to bring your skill to pilot those things properly. And if you're a good player in a clan mech, you're going to be devastating on the battlefield. Now don't get cocky though, because inner sphere mechs still have that capability of just tearing you apart if they catch you alone. So teamwork is going to become very, very essential for both inner sphere and clan players. Um, we had a test match where we had nothing but inner sphere versus uh, versus clan mechs, and it was such a nail biting experience that people were sweating and shaking after the test was done. And yeah, it's going to be a very exciting time. So hope to see you guys out on the battlefield. And that concludes the MWO Dev Vlog number five. Be sure to stay tuned for future vlogs, including more information on the development of Mech Warrior Online, community spotlights, and the exciting future of the MWO competitive scene. Speaking of which, I'd like to congratulate House of Lords for taking first place and Steel Jaguar Gaming for taking second place in the MWO Tournament First Engagement. And on behalf of Piranha Games and No Guts No Galaxy, thanks for watching, and until next time, Mech Warriors.